Imagine this. You're walking under a long overhead transmission line and suddenly you notice the wires are not tightly straight like guitar strings, but slightly hanging with a dip. Now have you ever wondered, why don't we just stretch them tight and keep them straight? Won't that look neater and save conductor length? Well, the truth is, if we do that, the wires may actually snap because of excessive tension. That's why engineers allow the wires to hang with a small dip. And this dip is what we call sag. Sag is not a fault, not a defect. It is actually a lifesaver for the conductor. My question to you, have you ever noticed how different transmission wires sag more in summer compared to winter? Think about it and tell me in the comments. Sag is simply the difference in level between the points of supports and the lowest point of the conductor. Imagine two supports at equal height. Let's call them A and B. The conductor is tied between them and the lowest point of the conductor is O. The vertical dip from A or B down to O is called the sag S. A small sag keeps the wire safe and too much sag requires taller poles. So we have to balance between conductor material cost and mechanical safety. Interestingly, the conductor curve actually forms a catenary shape. But when sag is very small compared to span, it looks like a parabola. The tension in a conductor plays a very important role. At the lowest point O, the tension acts horizontally, and we call that tension T0. At the supports, tension is slightly higher, but almost equal to T0. Now here's the catch. If sag is small, the wire is tight, which means tension is high and there is a risk of snapping. If sag is large, the wire is loose, tension is low, but poles need to be very tall. So in practice, engineers make a compromise between minimum sag and safe tension. By the way, do you think sag should be more in longer spans or shorter spans? Drop your guess in the comments. Let's derive the formula step by step. Suppose the span length is L, the weight per unit length of conductor is W, and the tension in conductor is T. Take the lowest point O as origin. For any point P on the conductor at distance X horizontally and Y vertically, the weight of portion OP is W times X, and this acts at a distance X divided by 2 from O, equating moments. T times Y equals W times X times X divided by 2, so Y equals WX squared divided by 2T. Now, at the support A, X equals L divided by 2, and Y equals SAG S. Therefore, SAG S equals WL squared divided by 8T. That's our famous SAG formula for equal level supports. Things get more interesting in hilly areas. When supports are at unequal levels, the lowest point O is not in the middle. Suppose the span length is L, the difference in support levels is H, the distances from lowest point O are X1 and X2, and the tension is T. Then the sag at lower support S1 equals WX1 squared divided by 2T, and the sag at higher support S2 equals WX2 squared divided by 2T. Also, X1 plus X2 equals L, and H equals WL divided by 2T, multiplied by X2 minus X1. From here, X1 and X2 can be calculated as L divided by 2 minus TH divided by WL, and L divided by 2 plus TH divided by WL. Once we know X1 and X2, we can easily get S1 and S2. Pretty cool, right? So next time you see a transmission line over hills, just remember there's math behind that sag. Now let's make it even more realistic. In practice, conductors don't just carry their own weight. They often get coated with ice in cold areas. And at the same time, wind pressure acts horizontally. So the total force is the vector sum of vertical and horizontal forces. The weight of conductor per meter is W. The weight of ice per meter is Wi, which equals density of ice multiplied by pi T multiplied by D plus T, where D is conductor diameter and T is ice thickness. The wind force per meter is WW, which equals wind pressure multiplied by D plus 2T. So the effective weight per unit length is WT equals square root of W plus WI whole squared plus WW squared. The conductor now hangs, making an angle theta with vertical, where tan theta equals WW divided by W plus WI. The slant sag equals WTL squared divided by 8T, and the vertical sag equals S cos theta. Let's solve a problem to make it clearer. A transmission line span is 150 meters. Conductor cross section is 2 square centimeters. Tension is 2000 kilograms. Specific gravity of conductor is 9.9 grams per cubic centimeter. Wind pressure is 1.5 kilograms per meter. 
First, calculate conductor weight per meter. Volume per meter is 2 multiplied by 100, which is 200 cubic centimeters. Weight equals 9.9 .9 multiplied by 200, which is 1980 grams or 1.98 kilograms. Next, calculate effective weight per meter. WT equals square root of 1.98 squared plus 1.5 squared. That equals square root of 3.92 plus 2.25, which is square root of 6.17, giving 2.48 kilograms. Now calculate slant sag. S equals WT multiplied by L squared divided by 80. That is 2.48 multiplied by 150 squared divided by 8 multiplied by 2000. This equals 3.48 meters. Now calculate vertical sag. Tan theta equals WW divided by W, which is 1.5 divided by 1.98, giving 0.76. Theta equals tan inverse of 0.76, which is 37.23 degrees. Vertical sag equals 3.48 multiplied by cos 37.23, which is 2.77 meters. So the vertical sag is about 2.77 meters. Pretty amazing, right? So friends, that's everything about SAG in overhead lines, from equal supports, unequal supports, to wind and ice effects, and even a real numerical example. Next time you walk under transmission lines, you'll know why they SAG, and you can even calculate approximately how much SAG there might be. Tell me in the comments, in your area, do you notice more SAG in winter or in summer? If you enjoyed this explanation, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to Electrology for more power system videos. And hey, if you want to support this channel, you can click the thanks button under the video or even join our channel family for exclusive perks. Your support really helps in bringing such detailed explanations regularly. See you in the next video till then. Stay curious, stay charged and keep learning with Electrology.